Hello and welcome to my YouTube video. Um, today I'm going to be um, supplying an introduction to um, multicoloured underglazed transfer printed uh, coloured pot lids um, and associated uh, what are termed as being wares. Um, before I go any further, um, what I will say is there are two um, specialist lines of uh, collecting pot lids. Um, one line, which is uh, very popular um, with uh, a lot of people, are the black and white, or what's known as monochrome lids. Although they can be printed in um, various colours, such as blue, red or green. Um, here's an example of a very popular one. Um, but it's not an area that I specialise in. Um, I happen to have been lucky enough to dig this one up many years ago, along with quite a few others. Um, but my passion for the last 45 years has been to specialise in the multicoloured variety, which typically um, do not feature any advertising on the surface. Um, they were made rather similar to the black and white lids to sell the pot contents. Um, but in doing so, it was recognised that there's something of a, an appeal, a sophisticated art form, um, when colour printing was applied. So they kept the advertising off the top of the surface and just devoted it to various uh, scenes and subject matters. Um, the subjects range enormously, um, and I'm going to be showing you in this introduction just a few examples. Um, there are some 450 uh, different uh, prints. Um, approximately 400 or so appear on pot lids. Um, the balance appears only on what we term as wear, which is uh, plates, jugs, mugs, vases, etc. And I'll be showing you some of those in um, this video. Um, but let me press on and just give a, a brief introduction. Um, so collecting these, um, first of all, this is what it's really about. Here is a pot lid. There is the base. Note, the base is plain. Um, some of the bases were decorated, but most of them were not. Um, so it really illustrates you've got a humble looking base. You fill it with contents of your choice, which typically would have been perhaps cold cream, toothpaste or some kind of hair preparation, um, which was popular actually with both um, middle class and um, wealthy uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, back in the 19th century, from the mid 19th century through to the end of the um, 19th century. So you fill that with contents they put the lid on, sealed it with a paper label. Most of the paper labels, of course, have been uh, lost or washed off um, over the last uh, whatever uh, number of years. Um, so people choose to uh, display them if they can find a base that matches, because typically the bases become separated from the lids over what is a very long period of time. Um, other people prefer to display them, for example, using a little plate stand. Um, so there we are. Uh, that shows very nicely, displays it very nicely on a sill or bookshelf, etc., etc. Um, other people like to um, hang them on the walls, and they do so by using a frame. So there's an example, securely... Uh, securely enclosed in a frame, hangs on the wall. Lovely, beautiful. Um, a lot of people uh, initially, if they've never seen a coloured lid before, um, they think, is it hand painted? I've been asked this question many, many times over the last 45 years. Um, no, uh, what you see is entirely um, hard glazed um, transfer. It will not come off as long as the top glaze remains um, undisturbed and it is a hard top glaze. Obviously, if you were to chisel uh, that off, then it would go into the underlying transfer. But this transfer is absolutely solid. It won't fade. It won't wash off. Um, it's, it's there for life, um, barring any, um, any abuse or, uh, or accidents. Um, so uh, what we have 
is uh, different sizes, uh, typically small, um, medium and large. Um, here's a smaller example there. Um, I'll put this against um, a medium example here. There, so you get an idea of the different sizing there. And then we have one of the larger examples here. So that is a typical representation of the range of uh, sizes of covered lids that you'll see. Now, having said that, um, no two covered lids are exactly the same uh, in terms of the um, output of the actual final transfer, in terms of the various color balances and in terms of even some of the detail. Um, so that also applies to some extent to the size of the lid. So, for example, what I'm calling a large size lid here that I've given an example, it doesn't come in one standard size only. What you're seeing here is just indicative of a larger size. You can have a variation um, perhaps as much as five millimeters um, up or down, and yet um, you can still call that a large lid. Um, the same sort of thing applies perhaps to a lesser degree on the medium size lid and the smaller size lids. Um, so uh, that's a point just to bear in mind. Um, the size of the lid has no bearing on its desirability or its value. The beauty of these things and the desirability is purely in the eye of the beholder. That's a wonderful thing. Um, pot lids are, what does it mean to you? Um, so there's no hard and fast rules uh, to, to look to follow. Um, however, what I will be doing in another video is giving guidance, um, particularly aimed at beginners, as to um, what I look for um, when choosing to buy a pot lid or a, or a piece of ware. It doesn't mean to say that it's the right and the only thing to do, but it, it, gives, um, it gives some form of basis to decide, um, you know, what do you as an individual um, want to achieve by forming a collection of pot lids and prat ware or uh, just pot lids um, or just wear if that's what you prefer. So let me just briefly um, run through some examples of some of the ranges of subject matters that we have. Um, <laughs> one of the popular ones are lids featuring bears and these can be anything from a scene such as this which is yeah rather violent um, of a bear uh, being hunted by hounds um, typically where the lid features a bear, it will indicate that it contains um, what was alleged to be bear's grease for gentlemen to um, apply to their hair uh, to promote growth and to stop hair from falling out, supposedly, and also to give it um, a sleek uh, appearance and to hold it in place as well. Um, so that's a very popular subject matter. Um, <coughs> Another example here uh, is from uh, a seaside scene. This happens to be Pegwell Bay in Kent, um, near Ramsgate. Um, there are quite a number produced um, with uh, this subject matter and this area in mind um, because it was used to sell a locally caught shrimp paste. Um, but they used a variety of, um, of, of different scenes to, um, to do that. Um, very popular. Uh, there were a lot of tourists, actually, back in Victorian times um, to that resort and to many other resorts. For example, here's a larger size lid from Ramsgate itself. So it's showing the harbour there. Um, it's, <coughs> it's based on some degree of accuracy, but these are not intended to be um, an actual um, exact representation of um, particular scenes. Often um, they will choose um, aspects of a view and incorporate it into one view to make it a more sort of appealing, um, attractive um, scene. Um, another example here of something quite different. Um, this would have been taken from a painting, probably dating to the 18th century. Um, it's titled The Best Card. Um, I can't recall the, the artist. Um, but a lot of inspiration was taken from um, paintings. Um, so there's um, quite a nice example there. 
um, of a completely different type of subject matter. Um, here is another one of a pheasant shooting. So this would have contained some kind of game paste. Um, so here we see a gentleman out on the hunt. Um, there were commemorative uh, lids. So the English um, or British and French uh, generals shown there, um, Lord Raglan and General Can Robert. Um, another example, which I started off with, uh, this shows um, an Eastern style scene with a lady having her hair attended to. Um, and typically that would indicate the preparations in the pot contents was something to do with the, the hair. So um, that would be probably a premium um, hair preparation for, um, for a wealthy lady. Um, here's an example of, uh, of a foreign uh, river scene. Um, typically that would indicate it's probably some kind of um, seafood preparation uh, within, the, within the pot. Um, here's another general view, possibly taken from a painting. Um, so it's a nice peaceful um, scene of shepherd boy uh, with flock and his uh, faithful dog. Um, animals featured. So here we have a, uh, it's actually taken from a painting. Again, I can't recall the artist, but I'll be talking in other videos um, and identifying more about the sources from which um, the inspiration for at least some of the um, scenes came from. So uh, this is known as um, Pretty Kettle of Fish. Um, so <laughs> we've got a lot of amusing action going on there um, between dogs creating mayhem. Um, after spilling a uh, cauldron of, um, of fish stew or similar. Um, other scenes, uh, for example, here we have Trafalgar Square. Um, so that would have been a popular subject matter. Um, events of the time. Um, here's an example of Crystal Palace. So uh, the 1851 exhibition, immensely popular and inspired quite a number of uh, different scenes um, of the palace, both exterior and interior. Um, and here's another example, again, possibly taken from a painting. Um, if not, it shows ladies at leisure or a lady at leisure with friends. Um, so that's known as the swing. Um, and finally, this one here with um, the late Prince Consort. So Queen Victoria's husband um, made posthumously um, after his uh, premature death. Um, so uh, yeah, it did feature royals. Um, just moving on quickly to conclude, um, here is what I'm referring to as where. So see there, we've got vases, mugs, plates. We've got what's known as a spill vase there. Um, we've got a uh, toothbrush holder, um, various other plates. Um, we've got jug, a cup and saucer, teapots, cups and saucers. We've got a ring stand there, a trinket dish, all sorts of different things. Um, pot lids on coloured bases, through to um, a jar there with a lid, a mug, and so on and so forth. So I'll be going into a lot more detail and showing individual pieces to illustrate um, different types of wear and subject matter in other videos. So this is just some of my collection. Um, I have a lot more. Um, so there's a lot uh, to use to illustrate. So I hope this has been of some um, basic introduction uh, to explain what is a pot lid, uh, coloured, underglazed, transfer printed. And I'll be doing another video to actually explain um, the technical side of um, how these were produced. Um, who, who bought them from the potteries and how did they resell them um, to the general public? So, um, yeah, that's all. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, post any comments if there's anything particular you'd like to see in, uh, in a further video, but otherwise I'll press on um, at a later date with many, many other videos over a long period of time. Bye for now.